Hey, welcome to HowToTrapBeavers.com. I'm Chris Pope, and in this segment, we're going to go through the basics of conner bears and kind of trap anatomy and some different staking and stabilizer options. So, to start with, a conner bear or a body gripping trap is a, a square trap. It's kind of different from your typical foothold trap, but it's designed so that an animal swims, and when you'll see it set in a minute, but so that when an animal swims in between the jaws, it swims in head first and gets caught behind the neck and under the chin and is dispatched fairly quickly. And my, my trap of choice when talking about conner bears is any kind of Belial. A Belial is a brand of trap. This is a Belial 280. The thing I like about it is that the jaws come and close completely together. So you get a very good catch, a very solid catch. Um, and even if you, uh, if you wind up by some strange chance getting a leg or a tail catch, you'll still hold the animal. In fact, one of my other uh, conner bear trapping videos, you'll see uh, a beaver caught by the front foot in a belial, and that's because the jaws come completely together. Any of the other style traps, any of the other brand traps, there's a gap, and so it doesn't, they don't close as, as tightly. Other thing that I really like about the belials is the safeties. The safeties stay in put, and they go where you put them. With the other, any other style conner bear, they've got just loose safeties, and when you set the trap, they'll fall off and they're, it's just a little bit more a little bit more convenient and a little bit less danger involved so to set the trap you just depress the springs and use the safety to hold the springs compressed so you can either do that by just manually depressing the spring and flipping the safety over which can get kind of cumbersome and laborsome um, especially with these strong new, newer traps or there are a bunch of different kind of trap setters this is just a general brand of trap setter and it just uses leverage and you hook it in the eyes of the springs it's got notches on each end squeeze it together and then you hold it together and move your safety slide your safety in and that depresses the springs so you've got your springs that are on each end, your safety on each spring, and then you've got the trap jaws. They fold open like this into a square, and you have you have your trigger, which is this wire-looking thing, and then on the other side you'll have a dog that drops into the trigger and holds the trigger and holds the trap set. So once you get your spring set, you squeeze the jaws together and flip your dog over into a notch on the trigger and that holds the trap set. Now this is, you, know, you want to be careful because these traps are powerful, especially these belials that come completely together. Um, you don't want to get caught in them. So, and that's the thing about the sprint, the, the safety catches is they stay in place. Any other trap, when you set it like this, you'll have to slide the safety catches out so that they'll stay set. All right, so now it's set ready to go. You've got your jaws, your dog, your trigger, and your springs. And then I've added this, I've got a trap tag on here. Most states require a trap tag. And then I've added this uh, about five foot piece of cable with a snare swivel on the end. And that just is, makes it easier to tie off. Some people think that since this is a killer style trap that you don't need to stake it or don't need to secure it. And that's bogus, that's crazy. If an animal does get caught, they're usually gonna flail, flail around and flounce around a bit. Um, if the water comes up, you get a flash flood, something like that, it can wash your trap away. If you got a catch, it's going to wash your catch away. You always want to stake it and secure it. So staking options, a lot of people use just two sticks. It's real simple and easy, and uh, you know, it's, it's handy. You don't have to buy anything extra. You can find them at the set, and you just stick them through the, through the springs, and you may stick them through the spring eyes, whatever meets your need, and it helps if you kind of wedge them between the jaws, between the corners of the jaws, it just just kind of gives it a little added stability. So you stick those, and if you're in good mud, you stick it as deep as you can. You want that trap to be real stable, and if you need to stabilize it a little bit more, you can use the jaws, or use the springs, press them up or down in order to put pressure on those, your stabilizer sticks to just hold it a little bit firmer in place. So that's a nice option. It's real handy if you don't have, that's why you want your spring set or your safety catches on. If you don't have the, you know, a bunch of trap stabilizers or something like that, those sticks can come in real handy. They're also good if you're in an area with, you know, some theft potential. 
They don't stand out as much as, say, these the big H stands, all right? So this is another option, an H stand. This is real good if you've got runs. It may be deeper runs. You can set the trap on here, and it just slides right on, right outside of the jaws, inside of the springs. You push it all the way down, and it seats real solid and firm right there. Then you can take it and stick it down in a deep run, stick it all the way down to the bottom, and it's set. It's solid. <clears throat> you don't want to count on this as your anchor, though. You want to. I, what I like to do is run my cable through these, this hole in the bottom here, and then anchor it off to a tree or something else, because this can come up. Unless it's really solid in the ground, it still has the potential to come up. So I wouldn't count on this as your anchor. I would still anchor it off to something else. And then you've also got these um, stakeizers, and all they do is, as you're setting the trap, as you're setting the trap, the jaws fit right in, and it attaches on the bottom. And so that's a good option if you can stick this in the ground. You're running a trail set or something like that. A lot of people use them for coons, finding good trails and stick them in the ground. You don't have anything sticking up. None of this H stand stuff sticking up. So that's a good option. So that's pretty much the basics of setting a conibear. Most of the time you're going to be setting a conibear in a run, in some place that you know is a travel path. And so you know these different staking options or stabilizing options are a good good way to help stabilize and secure your trap.